everyone, I'm Rebecca from The Glitch Stitchery. Today I'm here to do the next part in my mohair series for March. So that would be weaving with mohair. So <laughs> I have all my mohair yarns already balled up, um, which was a pain in the butt. So as soon as I'm done filming this, I'm going to make myself like a triple espresso because that was honestly really stressful. <laughs> uh, and I'll explain why in a minute, but that's not really the point. So I have the yarns that I dyed and the yarns that I spun all ready for me to start weaving with them. So for the warp, we have two options. I'm just going to grab those. So I'm hoping that this one will be usable as the warp. So this is the sock yarn that had the mohair in it. Um, I will add some words at the bottom of the exact fiber content, but this was from Knit Picks. It was in their dyeable section. I don't think they sell dyed skeins of it, just white ones. And it has a really nice texture to it. I really like it. So I'm hoping that this works as warp. But if it doesn't, my backup option is Merino Tencel from Echo View Fiber Mill. Yeah, that I also dyed. And I will, again, link to the videos above of me dyeing these because that was a whole video in itself. So to find out whether or not I can weave with that, I'm going to use a trick that I learned from Spunky Eclectic. I have a little sample of it here and I have a heddle. So what I'm going to be doing is putting the yarn through one of the, let's see if I can get it through there without having to grab a needle, one of the um, slots like so. So what we want to find out is if the mohair is going to fluff up to the point of being unusable if I use it as warp. So it's only a small percentage of the yarn for that mohair sock yarn, but if it becomes too fluffy and the strands get stuck together, then I am not going to be able to weave very well. All right, so this did, let's see, I'm just go a little more. I don't know if you can see it. You know, it fuzzed up like that. So my concern is that if I use it as warp, it's gonna fuzz up like that and then the strands will stick together and I'm gonna have to fight to weave. So um, not 100% comfortable using this as warp. That's fine, I have the backup and I have another skein of merino tinsel that I dyed in a different video that I can use if this one isn't enough. Like if I have to do two scarves for some reason, which you never know. So. This is going to be one scarf that I'm going to be doing as a, I'm gonna say sampler type of deal. So for the yarns I have to weave with, I have Mohair Boucle, two different colors. Don't really know which color I'm gonna use. This one makes more sense, honestly. I might save these to make something Minecraft inspired. So we'll set these aside. So uh, Mohair Boucle, which has all these cute little curlies on it. And then I have, we can use a little bit of the Surefoot mohair sock yarn to see how that weaves up as warp. I mean, no, as weft instead of as warp. I have my two ply low level artsy yarn. It's not super artsy. This one, I was really hoping that the blue one would work as warp because I was thinking it would be so nice to do a scarf that was this as the warp and then this as the whole weft. But it is not to be. I'll have to match it up to something else. That's fine. We're going to use a little bit of that in this, just sampling different yarns to see how they weave up. And this art yarn here, which is the one that's like 30% mohair and the rest is wool. And then there's also the thread of nylon around it. All right, so I'm gonna warp up the loom and we're gonna get that started and try that out. I might look through my mohair halo lace as well and see if I have any that would work with this project just so we could sample that as well. Um, I'm not sure I have any that are in a usable color palette. I feel like blue or purple would be necessary, maybe green, like a dark green. I don't know that I have any of that. so. I'll take a look, but I'm going to turn this off now and I'll be right back. Quick, I did look and I did find this, which 
It's hot pink, but I think it'll still work. So this is 65% mohair and 35% silk lace weight, and it's that fluffy, halo-y lace stuff. Um, I might double this up just to make it so it's a little closer to the weights on the other ones. This thing is 284 yards, even though it's only 25 grams, so very, very fine. All right, back to warping. All right, so this is finally warped up. Uh, the warping wasn't particularly difficult. I was just, I don't know, tired, I guess. <laughs> anyway, the reason that I was so annoyed with unwinding all, okay, let me back this up. I can enjoy my hobbies while still hating specific parts of it. And for me, the my least favorite tasks by far are always either winding skeins or unwinding skeins. Um, I find it an incredibly annoying process. So today, when I was winding my yarns into balls and cakes for this, I got like 75% of the way into this, maybe even more than that, probably, probably more like 90%. And then I felt the yarn wrap around my leg. So I looked down for a second, and in that moment of me looking down, the yarn skein flew off the swift, which then loosened the tension, which then caused the yarn to wind around the gears on my ball winder. And I had to cut it off the ball winder, which is why I have this and this. So then I didn't trust the ball winder not to mess up on me again, because once it gets stuck in the gears, I usually have to take it apart and clean it out. So I tried to use the Swift without the ball winder to wind, which one was that? I guess the one that I just warped up. And it was a massive mess <laughs> and I was very frustrated. So for these ones and the green one that I not don't have over here, I wrapped them around the back of a chair to unwind from because apparently both my Swift and my ball winder weren't behaving which went okay for the most part, but I have a big knot pile of this one that I don't think I'm ever gonna manage to get untangled, but the rest of them went okay. So yeah, I really, really hate unwinding skeins. I need to buy from more companies that offer winding services because that would be much simpler for me. So I have the Merino tensile warped up and then there, it didn't quite cover the entire loom, so I used some merino bamboo soft yarn I had that was in a similar color palette to finish it off, so I have it warped across the whole way. Um, they should behave pretty similarly. I'm not certain that the merino tensile is super wash, but since this is just me swatching anyway, it's not really a big deal. So, what I'm gonna do to start with is just wrap 25 wraps of each of the yarns on here and just um, start with that. And then once I see what that looks like and how much warp I have left, I will figure out from there how much I wanna weave. So I'm gonna start with the sock yarn and yeah, I'll just go from there. So let me hook up the other camera so you can see what I'm doing and I'll be right back.
right, so I've done each of the different examples at least once so far in a big stripe. Um, I know when I was packing the loom, I used 10 pieces of paper in the back. So far, four have fallen to the floor, which means I'm about 40% of the way done with my warp. So I'm going to just try to go through and do all the colors at least one more time, probably two more times. In, well, probably not the same order, if only because I've already forgotten what order I did. But, um, so yeah, we're going to just keep doing stripes until this is done, and then at the end I will take this off the loom and we'll look at it a little bit more closely. But I will say that some of the results have surprised me a bit as to how the different textures interact with being woven. Um, so yeah, we'll talk about that once it's off the loom. talk about my results. Uh, I still have to wash this, but I can at least talk about how the different yarns behaved during leaving. And I'm going to try to be quick because I can hear my neighbors being pretty noisy and I just want to get this done. <laughs> Alright, so the blue is the mohair sock yarn. I really like how it weaves up. Uh, I don't really know what I'm going to do with it yet, but it does look really nice. And as a side note, the, um, the shine to the merino tensile is really lovely. So that came out really, really nice. It's not overly fuzzy as far as wefts go, but it's not bad either. Then we have the boucle, which has the little curls peeking up through the weave. And I love how this came out. I have a ton of it and I can't wait to try and find ways to use it. It's really, really fun. Then we've got the art yarn that I thread plied. And this one was a little frustrating to weave with. It had the tendency to try to break apart at times, but I did manage to use it and it worked out pretty well. The one that surprised me the most is the mohair lace. I did double it up, but it's still lace weight. It's just so fine. And it has this really soft handle to it. And I can definitely see myself using a whole, like doing a whole weaving project using this. It would be really fun, and I like the texture and the fabric it creates. It's very drapey in this section. And then we've got the two-ply mohair art yarn. And that one did fuzz up more as I was weaving with it than it had from just being spun and washed. So this has a nice fuzzy handle to it, and it did just come out really nicely. So yeah, that's everything. I ended up just, you know, doing each of them at least one more time, most of them two or three times, until I finished the entire scarf. And right now I have very long fringes on this because I'm planning on doing twisted fringe and I just haven't gotten around to doing it yet. But that is it for the mohair weaving project. Um, the only thing left to do now is to crochet up a bunch of swatches and then do a crochet project. So you can expect that video next week. Um, in the meantime, I hope you have a great rest of your week and I hope I see you again soon.